Good morning, church. Welcome to morning worship here at Wrightsdale. If this is your first time with us, we are so glad you're here to join us. Hopefully you'll relax, enjoy, and feel welcome. Please fill out the Connect card in your bulletin and take it to the Welcome Center, and you'll receive a free gift from us. We also want to say good morning to our many friends watching on the live stream broadcast. If you're watching online, be sure to leave us a like or a comment and let us know where you're watching from. Our huge community Easter egg hunt outreach is coming back this Saturday, March 23rd at Claremont Elementary School. Explosion 2024 is open to the public, so we want you to invite your friends and family. Right after church today, we're hosting an egg packing party in Douglas Hall to prepare for Saturday. So if you're able to stay and help us load up all the eggs with candies and goodies, we would really appreciate your help. The Season Saints Luncheon is happening this Thursday. March 21st at 12 noon. All our seniors are invited out for a great luncheon and sharing friendships together. Any questions, see Beth Osborne. Uh, Growth Track is coming to our church uh, on Sunday, April 7th at 9 a.m. Growth Track is a series of discipleship classes that can help you get growing and move forward in your faith, whether you're a new Christian or a veteran believer. Check out this video about Growth Track. Hey Wrightsdale, it's Hey Wrightsdale, it's time to get growing. Growth Track is launching on Sunday, April 7th at 9 a.m. What is a growth track? A growth track is an intentional series of discipleship classes designed to help a person grow in their faith in Jesus Christ. It's a pathway designed to lead you from timid inexperience to confident maturity in your walk with Jesus. New believers need the basics to begin their journey. Immature believers need to be taught the spiritual skills related to Bible study, prayer, worship, giving, spiritual growth, and sharing their faith. Stagnant or stalled believers need a boost to get spiritually growing again. Veteran believers need to know that Jesus calls them to more than just doing church on the weekends. You don't want to miss this awesome opportunity to supercharge your spiritual growth. Growth track number one will be led by Rusty and Dana Young and launches on Sunday, April 7th at 9 a.m. This elective class will run during the Sunday school hour for six weeks and your study book is provided for free. Sign up today or learn more at wrightsdale.org slash growth track. Great class. Um, many other events are happening in the coming weeks, so be sure to read your bulletin about the Women in Missions meeting. We have a community meal coming up. The RAs, GAs, and Actines all have sleepover events, as well as information about Vacation Bible School. But for today, every Easter season, Southern Baptist churches come together to give to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering, which helps to fuel gospel missions in North America. Our church has a goal of raising $6,000 for North American missions this Easter, and you can give to that through the offering envelopes in the pew or online at wrightsdale.org giving, and choose the Annie Armstrong checkbox. Check out this video, and you'll see some of the awesome things God is doing with your dollars right here in North America. Who's in my family? Yeah, if you looked at a picture of ours, we'd certainly look different. We have two biological children. We have three adopted children. So certainly if you look at a photo, you see brown hair, you see dark skin, you see blonde hair. And certainly we do get weird looks, but the great thing is seeing the Lord work and do things that you never even dreamed possible. The call to adopt came out of intimacy with the Lord, just like our calling to plant this church. I'm the church planting pastor of Refuge Church in the Ortega community of Jacksonville. We've been here about two and a half years. It was a community that was very unreached. And being there, the Lord just began to kind of do something in our heart. We didn't set out to plant a church for foster and adoptive families. It really just happened. The Lord did it. A lot of our church has become people from this community who are fostering or who are adopted. So we share that in common. People are longing for community. And when you add the layer of taking on people and children from difficult places, it's not easy. It's not comfortable. I think the reason they've shown up here 
there's a big closet full of diapers and shoes and strollers and car seats and they see that and they come here to get a need met. Through that they build a relationship. Next thing we know they're in our church on a Sunday and I think about the amount of children who come to our church who if families didn't say yes to foster care and adoption, uh, those, those children would never hear about Jesus, they'd never hear the gospel. This is the calling that God has for us and when people give to Annie Armstrong, you're able to support those who are on the front lines of gospel work and people hear the gospel who would never have a chance to hear the gospel. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I want to just read a couple passages from Psalms. Um, I'm going to start with um, some verses from chapter 145. It says, I will exalt you, my God and King and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. And then in chapter 108, verse 1 says this, My heart is confident in you, O God. No wonder I can sing your praises with all my heart. Um, this first song we're going to sing this morning is one that's been around for a while. It's called How Can I Keep From Singing? And the message of it just is still rings so true because how can we not sing to God and express our gratitude and worship to him when we stop and consider everything that he's done he's great his love is like no other and most importantly we praise him and thank him for Jesus and as we're stepping into this Easter season really reflecting on what the cross means to us and what the resurrection means to us and the hope that we have and the eternal security that we have in that. So I'm going to invite you to stand and just worship with us this morning as we sing praises to the Lord for all that he's done. Um, you know, I think sometimes we forget the weight of what Jesus did. Like if you really stop and think about it, like don't take it for granted. Just press into that and just worship him for that this yeah. morning.
Amen. Praise the Lord.
gracious Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for this day and just for this time of worship that we can give back our praise to you and just pour out our hearts in worship and thank you for the gift that we have in Jesus and especially this time of year when we take special time set apart to reflect on the cross and the resurrection of Jesus and my goodness, we don't deserve it, but we just praise you and thank you that you sent Jesus anyway and for all that he means to us and just the hope and eternal security and we can't wait to see you face to face someday and just help us to live our lives well live our lives in a way that reflects you and live lives of worship for it's in jesus name i pray amen Well, good morning, church. Happy Sunday. Is it a good day for you? I hope so. I hope you're glad to be here today. And uh, if you are a guest, maybe it's your first or second time, let me just take a moment here, just extend my greetings to you. My name's Ryan Day. I'm the lead pastor here at Wrightsdale. And uh, we're glad you're here with us today. Whether you're here in the room or whether you're at home or somewhere traveling and you are watching online, we give you folks our greetings as well. And uh, we're, we're so excited. These last few weeks, we've been marching on towards Easter. And uh, man, we're just really looking forward to that day. But for today, we're so glad that you're here. We're going to open God's Word together. And uh, if you open your bulletin, you will see there a, a series of some message notes, a little printout that you'll be able to follow along uh, with our study today. And uh, we're going to be looking at a number of passages together. But just before we come to the scriptures, how about we take just a moment here and just quiet our hearts and just come to the Lord in prayer and just have another moment of just asking Him, him to oversee this time of our study uh, as we seek Him and His truth together. So I want to invite you to pray. Our Father, we just come before you now. This truly is the high point of our service. We've had opportunity to sing our praises to you and to express how awesome, Lord, that you are. You are mighty in your majesty. You're awesome in power. You are the true and living God of the universe. You are far above us and beyond us. And Lord, you're so incredible in your majesty and your dominion over the universe. And Lord, who are we? Just 
ordinary people that you would want to save us and redeem us, forgive us of our sins and our rebellion against you, and Lord, win us back to yourself and bring us into your family. So we thank you for that. We praise you for how you sent your son Jesus to be our Savior. In these special weeks, Lord, that, that come up to Easter Sunday, we're reminded of Jesus' life, his perfect life, and then his death on the cross, and of course his resurrection that we will celebrate on that special Sunday. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. And even today, as we open your word and as we think about what it means to belong to your family, I pray that you'll give us wisdom today and understanding. Help us, each one, to examine our own hearts in light of your truth, and let your Holy Spirit speak to us today. Let the Holy Spirit be the primary teacher during this time, we'll, we'll give it all over to you, Lord. We know that your presence is here in our midst, and so use your spirit and your word to cause us to grow and change today. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Even though Americans are totally devoted to their NFL football and their Major League Baseball, soccer is still the number one sport in the world. And Cristiano Ronaldo is one of soccer's biggest superstars. For many years, Ronaldo played with the Real Madrid club there in Spain. But in 2022, he signed a mega deal with Saudi Arabia's Al Nasser football club that puts him in their uniform until the year 2025 at a whopping cost of $75 million per year. Well, church, back in January of this year, the Al Nasser team was scheduled to play a match in China, where the Chinese fans absolutely love Cristiano Ronaldo. Well, you can imagine how thrilled the fans were there in the city of Shenzhen when Ronaldo shows up in full uniform outside the stadium, and he begins conducting impromptu autograph sessions and giving people photo opportunities. The photos and the videos of these moments here, of these fan interactions, it went viral all across China and then all around the world. People were there posing with Ronaldo. They were having their videos taken with him as he did some of his most famous celebration poses. But there was just one problem. This Cristiano Ronaldo was not the real Cristiano Ronaldo, but an imposter. In other words, he was a fake. You see, the real Cristiano Ronaldo had suffered an injury. He was not available to play in this match. But regardless, the Chinese fans, they saw this Ronaldo-looking guy with the perfect hair and the soccer cleats and the yellow number seven jersey, and so they swarmed him. They asked him for autographs, and they asked him for photos, many of them totally unaware that this man wasn't the real Ronaldo. Well, friends, the reason that I share that true story with you this morning is because pretenders are not just limited to the sports or the entertainment world. Pretenders exist in the church world as well. According to LifeWay research, approximately 75% of all Americans affirm their belief in God. And roughly 63% of Americans self-identify as a Christian. But friend, what is it exactly that makes a genuine Christian? What does it really mean to belong to the Christian faith? Well, friends, it is on that essential question that many Americans are going wrong. And they are proving themselves to be just as counterfeit as that wannabe Ronaldo. When Americans get asked to be specific about what it means exactly to be a Christian, many Americans typically respond by saying that they believe in God, they think positively about Jesus, they go to church services on a pretty regular basis. They own a Bible. And they participate in the various religious holidays like Christmas and, and Easter. And so our American culture has concluded that as, as long as a person 
believes in Jesus and tries to be a good person and, and do all the Christian things, that's what it must mean to be a Christian. But friends, I'm here to tell you this morning on the authority of the Word of God that people who hold that particular viewpoint are just pretenders. They are just pretenders. Because the scriptures teach that true faith is much, much more than just thinking positively about Jesus or doing all the Christian things. And so friends, perhaps this morning, is it perhaps that you are a pretender here this morning? Is it possible that you have become convinced that you are a Christian when in fact you are not? How can you know for sure that you genuinely are a follower of Jesus Christ and that your faith is genuine? Well, friends, in this message today that I've entitled Three Elements of Genuine Faith, we are going to tackle this important subject by looking at the three critical elements that the Bible presents. The Bible teaches these three critical elements must be present in order for any person to be a genuine Christian and to genuinely belong to God's family. Well, church, by the end of this message today, I want you to come away knowing this. I want you to know that genuine faith isn't Bible words to confess or religious activities that impress. It's a commitment to Jesus you possess. Genuine faith isn't Bible words to confess or religious activities that impress. It's a commitment to Jesus you possess. So friends, all that held out to you this morning as introduction, introduction for our study. What are the three elements of genuine faith according to the Bible. What is it that you genuinely need to possess if you want to truly belong to Jesus, if you genuinely want to experience salvation? Well, church, I hope you'll write these down today, these three elements of genuine faith, and we're going to study them right from the pages of God's Word. Here's number one. You need to understand, excuse me, you need understanding of the critical content of faith. Number one, you need critical understanding of the critical content of faith. Now, church, if you wanted to introduce someone to the sport of baseball, you would start by teaching that person the fundamental basics of baseball. You would teach them the basics. You would teach them that there's nine players, there's four bases, there's, there's pitchers, and there's hitters, there's fielders. Right? There's balls and strikes and how runs are scored. If someone said they were interested in becoming a baseball fan, this is where you would start, the very fundamental basics of baseball. Well, friends, for any person to become a Christian and possess true Christian faith, there is also critical content that that individual first needs to understand. Now, looking across the spectrum of Christian history, the scholars of older days used to use a Latin word to describe what was first needed, this first element of genuine faith. It's a Latin word called notitia. Notitia, which is simply a word that means knowledge. Knowledge. In other words, friends, you can't have true faith without first having knowledge of the content. Knowledge of the content. You see, Christianity is not just faith in faith. It's not just faith in faith. No, true faith always has an object. It's always faith in something. There's content to true faith. Well, what is the critical content that every genuine Christian must have as the foundation? Well, friends, I want you to take your Bible and open now or click on your Bible app. And I want you to go to 1 Corinthians in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians, Paul's letter to the Corinthians in chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And if you'll just follow here, we will read. It will also be on the screen for you. But 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I'd like to read just the first four verses. And you're welcome to follow along in your Bible or on the screen. I'm reading from the 
New International Version this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning in verse 1. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Now, friends, the letter of 1 Corinthians was written from the Apostle Paul, written to a church, a church at the ancient city of Corinth that was struggling with a whole bunch of different issues. Well, one of the issues this New Testament church was struggling with was on this doctrine of resurrection. And not only the doctrine of resurrection, but then the implications of resurrection and how that applies to, to, to regular life and to the Christian life. Well, Paul has to address a number of these issues. And as Paul seeks to address their struggles, chapter 15 opens with Paul reminding this church of the critical content that he had been teaching them since day one. Paul says, this is what I preach to you from the very beginning. This gospel, he says, by which you are saved so long as you hold firm to it and as long as you don't depart. Now, friends, look at verses 3 and 4. Put a star by that. Highlight that. Don't miss this. Look at this critical content. Don't miss it. This is the very heart and soul of Christianity. Paul says, For what I received, I passed on to you as first importance that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, that He was buried and that He was raised on the third day, according to the Scriptures. And so, Paul reminds the Corinthians, he reminds them that Christianity begins with all the facts, the, the historical facts about Jesus, who Jesus is, that he's the, he's the son of God, that he died for our sins, that he was then buried in the tomb, and three days later, he rose again in resurrection. And so, church, do you see, for, for Christianity to exist, for genuine faith to exist, there must first be critical content critical content that that person must first understand in order to be a christian and so i'm telling you today friends christianity the christian faith is not just stepping off into nothingness christian faith is not just some nebulous faith in faith no it's faith in something it's faith in something it's it's knowing and it's accepting critical content about who Jesus is, why he came, what he accomplished with his life and his death, and what he calls us to do in response. So friends, I, I want to help you understand, genuine faith isn't just faith that just kind of floats around out there in thin air. No, genuine faith starts with a fundamental knowledge. It's something to know. And what is to be known is this truth, these facts about Jesus, his his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection. Paul told another church, the church at Ephesus, he told the church leaders in Acts chapter 20, verse 19, Paul told those church leaders, I declare today to you that I have been faithful, for I didn't shrink from declaring all that God wanted you to know. That's Acts chapter 20, verse 19. So everywhere Paul went, everywhere Paul did ministry, he, he held out faithfully the critical content of Christianity. He held out the critical content that people needed to know. And so the very first thing, the first element that must be present for genuine faith is this knowledge. Knowledge of the critical content. A person can't believe what a person doesn't know. A person can't believe what a person doesn't know. And so knowing the content is the first thing that a person needs to possess real Christian faith. Now, let's move forward. Here's a second element. We're talking about genuine faith today. These three elements must be present for a person 
To be a genuine Christian, to have genuine faith, here's number two. You need conviction that the content of faith is true. You need conviction that the content of faith is true. Now, church, I graduated from public high school, and I went to public high school in the early 90s at South Carroll High School there in Carroll County, Maryland. And as I was going through my four years at a public high school, believe it or not, students at the public high school were allowed to take classes on Old Testament and New Testament survey. You could take Old Testament or New Testament survey for, for school credit at the public school. In fact, my ninth grade homeroom teacher was one of the instructors for some of those Bible classes. Now, it's important for you to understand these classes that were offered at my high school, they were not for the purpose of proposing religion, advancing religion, or promoting spirituality in any way. No, not at all. These classes were offered merely for the purposes of examining the Bible as literature. And, and that still happens today. Uh, many secular colleges, many, many universities today, uh, publicly funded institutions, there are students there, and they can go and they can take some Bible class, uh, either from the Old Testament or the New Testament, to learn more about it. But here's what's interesting. While the teachers and the professors, of course, present the Bible as classroom content, what typically happens in those classes is that the Bible's content is discredited. It's discredited as nothing more than just fables or legends. For instance, students will often hear in those public settings, they will hear that Adam and Eve were just figurative beings, just fictional creations. They'll be told that Noah's Ark was just a legend. Or what about Jonah? Jonah being swallowed by the great fish? Well, that's just a tall tale, they are told. And what about Jesus? Well, of course, Jesus lived historically, and of course, they even have to affirm that. But while Jesus was an influential teacher, they will say, they say he really wasn't the supernatural son of God. And so, what's interesting is that even though the Bible is present in these classes, something that is sadly missing is belief. The Bible is there in all the content, but what's missing, sadly, is belief. Well, friends, when we consider these core elements that, that belong to genuine faith, a second element that must be present, always it must be present, is this heartfelt conviction that the content is true. That the content is true. Now, the Bible scholars of old had a Latin word for this. They called it ascensus, ascensus, and that simply means to assent, to assent, to agree, or to believe. And so, what I'm telling you this morning, church, is it's very possible. It is very possible for a person to own a Bible and to read the Bible and to intellectually understand all of the content about Jesus or Christianity, but if that person doesn't believe that it's true, if they don't believe that it's true, then they cannot possibly be a genuine Christian. Now, I want you to turn a few pages here. I want you to go to another passage of God's Word here in the New Testament, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Would you turn a few pages, just turn a few pages to the right, or if you're using your Bible app, just click the button there, and go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. It'll also be on the screen for you, but you can look with me at your copy of Scripture, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. Again, Paul is the writer, writing to a church at Thessalonica. Paul writes in verse 13, and we also thank God continually, because... When you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as a human word, but as it actually is the word of God, which is indeed at work in you 
who believe. Now, church, back in ancient times, Thessalonica was a well-known city of the Roman Empire. In fact, it was the capital city of this region that's called Macedonia. And Paul comes to this really major city, city, and when he's there, Paul shares the message of Jesus. He, He shares the message of Jesus. Anybody who will listen, Paul's sharing about Jesus, his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection. He he shares it to anybody who would listen. Well, notice in verse 13, Paul rejoices that when the Thessalonian people heard the message, they didn't just treat it as if it was some intellectual lecture or some political stump speech. Look what Paul said there. When the Thessalonians heard this good news about Jesus, Paul says they accepted it. They believed it. They welcomed it into their minds, believing it that it was the truth from God himself. And so friends, are you, are you with me? Don't miss this. Here's the second element. The second element for true, genuine faith is this heartfelt conviction that the content is true. That the content is true. Listen, you've got to understand, there are dozens and dozens of intellectually bright, brilliantly gifted atheists who read the Bible, study the Bible. They write research papers on topics from the Bible. They they write topics about Christianity and Jesus. And they're atheistic people, but they write all of these these academic projects and papers. And and in those instances, they have interacted with the content. They've read and they're understanding the content, but they aren't genuine Christians. They aren't authentic Christians because they haven't embraced it as truth. They haven't embraced it as the truth. And so what I'm sharing with you, friends, is in order for a person to possess genuine faith that individual must receive the content as true they must receive it as true and this is a reality that the bible affirms again and again up on the screen you're going to see john chapter 1 verse 12 john 1 12 was such a powerful scripture yet to all who did receive him to those who believed in his name He gave the right to become children of God. Another famous verse is Romans 10. Many of you know Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with the heart you believe and are justified. It's with your mouth you profess your faith and are saved. So you see, friends, Study the New Testament, and you see again and again and again. You see what's required. What is required for genuine faith is to accept, to receive, to believe. This is that second critical content. Now, a few years ago, church, I was flying back to Baltimore uh, from Orlando. I was flying on Southwest Airlines, and I was just flying and looking out the window, and all of a sudden, I looked at the seat in front of me, and I noticed a special sticker there. A sticker on the seat back in front of me. And it said, your seat cushion is a flotation device. Well, as I looked out the window, and since the Atlantic Ocean was only a few miles to the east at that moment, that was good content for me to know. But church, just imagine for a moment, what if the plane really did have an emergency water landing? What if the plane really was going down? What if it really was going to take a, take a dunk into the Atlantic Ocean? Imagine two people sitting on either side of me on that southwest flight. Imagine the one person to my left sees that sticker and says, Oh, well, would you look at that? Now, there's an interesting little factoid. My seat is a flotation device. What an ingenious idea. Now, does that person have the right content? Do they have the right content? The answer is yes. They do have the right content. But the better response is the second person, the second person who believes it, 
the second person who starts unbuckling their seatbelt and they start scrambling around and they grab that cushion tight in preparation for swimming. So you see, friends, it's a powerful reminder for us that simply having an intellectual understanding of the Bible, that is not sufficient for genuine faith. The Bible teaches genuine faith always includes a heartfelt conviction that the content is true. That the content is true. And so, here's the big idea we're trying to get dialed in on today. Genuine faith is in Bible words to confess or religious activities that impress. It's a commitment to Jesus you possess. Well, faith, genuine faith, always has three elements. These three elements are taught over and over in the New Testament. So far, we've unpacked two of them. Let's look at the final element of genuine faith. You need personal trust and reliance on Jesus alone. You need personal trust and reliance on Jesus alone. Now, right now, I'm reading a great book in my free time by Martha McSally. The title of this book is entitled Dare to Fly. She's a retired colonel out of the Air Force, but during her active duty years, uh, she was a a flyer. She was a pilot for the Air Force. She flew the world-famous A-10 Warthog fighter jet. She was the first American woman in history to take a fighter jet into combat. The first woman ever to, to take a fighter pilot into live combat. Now, Martha McSally said in the book that one of the hardest things that fighter pilots have to learn is how to fly their jet in total darkness. How to fly in darkness, how to fly in overcast conditions when they cannot see anything visually. When that happens, the pilot is forced to rely entirely on the instruments, on the instrument panel there in the cockpit. And the only way The only way that a man or woman can become a military aviator is they must first learn. They must master how to entrust their flying to the instruments. They must entrust their flying to the instruments. Well, church, there's a third critical element of genuine faith. It must be present. And it is this third element we're going to talk about now, personal trust and reliance on Jesus alone. In ancient times, the Bible scholars referred to this as fiducia. Fiducia is a Latin word that simply means trust, trust or commitment. Now, a perfect example of this is given to us in the New Testament book of James. So would you turn just a few pages to James chapter 2. James chapter 2, an amazing example that speaks to this is in James chapter 2. James chapter 2, verse 19. It's also on the screen, James 2. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. Friends, here is a powerful text that reminds us that even though a person may understand all of the right content they may even then accept the content as true that still does not make that individual a genuine Christian. And no better example of that is what we have read here in James 2. The example given to us, no better example we could think about than the example of Satan himself and his demons. Satan and his demons. When Jesus was there in the Gospels, When he was personally interacting with Satan and with Satan's demons, they understood perfectly who Jesus was. They knew Jesus' identity as the Son of God, and not only did they know the facts of it, they believed it too. They really believed that Jesus really was the Son of God. They knew the facts about Jesus, and they believed it. In fact, you might remember a famous account in Luke chapter 8. I won't make you turn there, but some of you remember this famous account where Jesus confronts 
this, this man who is possessed with a whole legion full of demons. And in that narrative, we read how the demons are pleading with Jesus not to destroy them, not to send them back into the abyss. They're begging Jesus not to destroy them. They believed that Jesus had all the power as a son of God. They believed that Jesus had all the power to send them back to the abyss or even to destroy them. They had the right content about Jesus, didn't they? And they believed it. They had the right content and they believed it was true. But where does Satan always stop short? Where do the demons never go past? What is it that they will never ever do it's this third element of genuine faith what they will never do what satan will never do is to entrust himself to jesus they will never entrust themselves to jesus yield to jesus place their full reliance upon jesus as savior and lord So friends, we've got to understand here this morning that for a person to have genuine Christian faith, there must be this third element. It's this third element of genuine faith. It's this personal, wholehearted commitment and reliance on Jesus. You all walked into this room today and you sat down in these seats And you entrusted yourself to these seats. I didn't see anyone down on hands and knees, crawling, weight testing, measuring, looking at strength to weight ratios. You did none of that. You came in and you sat down. You entrusted all of your weight into these seats to hold you. Friend, that's the same with genuine faith. You entrust all of yourself to Jesus by faith. You believe, you rely on him alone. He alone is the only one who can forgive your sins and give you salvation. So friend, do you you hear what I'm sharing today? Genuine faith, it's not just owning a Bible. It's not just going to church. It's not just thinking positively about God or Jesus or just doing all the Christian things. No, true faith. Faith is committing your entire self to Jesus. It's yielding to him. It's committing to him with heartfelt commitment. And so, friend, I just need to pause right here. Friend, I'm going to ask you the most important question you will ever be asked. Do you have genuine faith? In Jesus Christ have you entrusted yourself to Jesus entirely have you yielded yourself to Jesus wholeheartedly have you put all your trust all your reliance for salvation in Jesus alone Oh, friend, you've got to hear me. There are millions and millions out there today all around you. They know all the content, and they even know the content is true. But they are not genuine Christians because they've never, and they've never stepped across that line to this third element of genuine trust and commitment and reliance on Jesus Christ alone. And friend, I've got to ask you, Are you among them? Are you among them? You know all the content. You could tell someone else about it. And you even believe it's true. You may even be here for the the Easter celebration. But friend, do you genuinely know Christ? Has there been that day in your life when you genuinely entrusted yourself to Jesus? Have you yielded your life to him? To to have him be your Lord and your Savior. Oh friend, that is the most important question you will ever be 
asked in this life. And so, friend, I want to give you just an opportunity right now. Would you just bow your head right where you're seated? Even for those of you who are watching at home, maybe just think quietly as you listen. Friend, I want to give you an opportunity right here, here in this quiet moment, to respond. To respond to what you've heard today. Friend, in this moment, will you pray and talk to Jesus? Will you take that that step of commitment, that step of reliance once and for all? Friend, just write from your own heart. You can just speak to the Lord. He, He promises to hear. You could say, Lord Jesus, I see now what true faith is about. It's more than just understanding some content. It's more than just understanding that it's true. Jesus, I commit to you. I entrust myself to you. I do that today. I do it right now. I believe you died for me and you rose again. Jesus, my life, my my plans, my heart are all yours. Take your rightful place as Lord of my life. Let me live every day as a faithful follower of your leading in my life from this day forward. Amen. Friend, as you look up here now, I just want to talk for a moment just to some of you who prayed just now. Friend, if you made that commitment today, that prayer of reliance and trust, that genuine trust in Jesus, friend, I hope you'll come and connect with me after our service today. We want to encourage you. It's an amazing step that you would put your trust in Jesus. So friend, I hope you'll come and connect with me. We want to know that you took that step today. We want to pray for you, encourage you. Uh, We want to get a Bible into your hands. And even even for those of you who are maybe watching at home today or you're traveling or you're watching online right now, friend, if you prayed today, if you're taking that step of wholehearted commitment, that reliance on Jesus, I hope you'll send me an email. Maybe later today or maybe sometime over the next few days, shoot me a note, ryan at wrightsdale.org. Friend, let me know that you prayed to put your trust in Jesus today. We'll encourage you. I promise I'll, I'll connect with you. We'll get a Bible into your hands. So we want to see you be able to take those next steps as a, as a true follower of Jesus. Well, church, at the beginning of our message today, I told you a true story, a humorous true story of the soccer fans over there in China who lined up by the hundreds to come and take selfies and shoot videos with Cristiano Ronaldo only to find out... And, He was just a pretender. Even though he had the jersey, even though he had the right haircut, he he even had the cleats, he, he had the jersey. He wasn't the genuine article. And friends, in the same way, there are millions upon millions of Americans who think they are Christians because they grew up in a Christian home or they attend church off and on or they have a Bible on their shelf, they they think positively about God or Jesus, but in countless cases, they are not the real thing. They are not the real thing because they have not embraced all three of the genuine elements of faith that are taught plainly in the scriptures. And so friend, I want to just encourage you today, whether you're here or whether you're watching online, oh friend, Make sure today that your faith is genuine. Make sure your faith is the real thing. Because genuine faith isn't Bible words to confess or religious activities that impress. It's a commitment to Jesus you possess. Let's pray. Lord, we want to thank you for this time today to be reminded of what genuine faith is all about. Lord, during this special season, this run-up to Easter, so many millions of people are going to churches, they're singing songs, they're carrying Bibles, they're reading verses, they're engaging in various church activities, but Father, so many of them are not genuine believers, not because they're not well-meaning or kind people, but Lord, they have not, they have not walked through all three of these realities that your word teaches us about. Not only knowing the critical content, but then believing that it's true and then entrusting ourselves to Jesus. Lord, if there's someone here today or watching online 
who is in that place, Lord, would you speak to them today? Lord, before this day comes to a close, may this be the day, this day be the day that they commit wholeheartedly to Jesus, to turn to him in full reliance, to entrust themselves to him and to become the genuine Christian that your word calls us to be. Thank you for this time of study today. Lord, we thank you most of all for Jesus. It's in Jesus alone that salvation is found. And so we thank you for our Savior. And we pray it all in his name. Amen. Church, I want to invite you to stand. You've all been listening so well. You've been such a very attentive group here today. And can we close our service today by singing a song together? Again, just another song, another opportunity for you, friend, to maybe bow your head even as we sing and to make your commitment as we sing today. Number 305 is in your songbook. It's also up on the screen as well. Let's sing together, church. I have decided to follow Jesus. Sing out with me. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Sing the second. Though none go with me. Though none go with me. I still will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. No turning back. No turning back. Friend, I'm just going to let you take a moment here. Just ask Dana just to play it through one final time before we sing that fourth verse. Maybe you just need another moment here, friend, just to talk silently to the Lord. Uh, Friend, I'm just giving you another moment here. I'll let Dana play that third for us. Friend, maybe this is your moment right here to trust in Christ. You know the content. You've come to church. You went to youth group, vacation Bible school. You know the content. You know it's true. But friend, have you entrusted yourself to Christ? Will you do that today? Let's sing the fourth, and we'll be dismissed. Sing that fourth. The world behind me, the cross before me. Sing it. The world behind me. wonderful day here at Wright Sail. Glad you all were here with us to come and worship and, uh, and find encouraging friendships and be able to open God's Word. If you are able to stay, I will invite you uh, to come over to Douglas Hall if you want to hang out for some food and some friends. We're going to be packing some eggs and getting things ready for the big egg explosion. That's our Easter outreach that's going to be up at Claremont Elementary School. So if you can hang out with us, we'd appreciate that. I'll remind you that our Sunday night studies is back tonight. Come on out and enjoy that as well as our Wrightsdale Youth meets tonight at 6 o'clock. We've got a great group. Almost, almost 40 kids are up in our youth group on Sunday night. So if you've got a 6th through 12th grader, make sure you get them up there with Pastor Jared and all of our youth leaders who are investing in them and helping them grow as disciples. And boy, God's doing some awesome stuff around here, and we, we praise him for that. Have a wonderful Lord's Day. If you need to come and see me or talk to me after church, I'm going to hang around for a few minutes. I'd be happy to connect with you, talk to you about Jesus, or give you a hug. Whatever it is that you need today, don't hesitate. But I hope you have a wonderful Sunday, and uh, let me dismiss us in prayer.
Father, send us out now in safety. It's been a great day here at Wrightsdale, and I just pray you'll take us home as we go. And for the egg packing party that will happen, Lord, just let there be a lot of joy and excitement. It's an opportunity for us to share Jesus with our community this coming Saturday, and so we're excited to do that. I pray that you'll bring us back again tonight for all those involved in our youth group and Sunday night studies. And Lord, give us a wonderful Sunday as we go. We'll give you the praise, and we do it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you for joining together with us today in worship as we've learned more about God and what He has for each one of our lives. If you made a decision for Christ today, or if you would like to talk further about what God has done for you in the giving of His Son Jesus, I would encourage you to email me at the address that is on the screen, ryan at wrightsdale.org. We would love to connect with you to help you begin a brand new journey with Jesus Christ. If you'd like to help contribute to our ministry and mission as we take this message of the gospel around our community and across the world, go to the link on the screen today and help us help others discover the message of God's love.